Here's why the Milwaukee Bucks' new depth could help them repeat as NBA champions. Despite losing P.J. Tucker and Bryn Forbes in free agency, bringing in Boogie Cousins, Wesley Snipes, and Grayson Allen, combined with the internal development of Jordan Wara, has helped greatly fill the gap in the Bucks' supporting cast. Let's delve into how the reigning champions have yet again adequately filled their depth chart around the big three of Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday, and why that could very possibly lead to the franchise's third Larry O'Brien trophy. Quickly, only 11.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. The current season in the association has been incredibly turbulent so far as we're hearing about new players and coaches entering health and safety protocols every hour seemingly. While that's expected to come to an end soon given most players will have built up the antibodies to this contagious variant, teams like the Milwaukee Bucks have faced a ton of adversity. Despite missing Batman for the last five games, along with Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez, among many others to protocols in 2021-22, of course, the Bucks' end goal is still bringing home another championship. But it's difficult to fully evaluate Milwaukee right now, given those aforementioned players have missed massive chunks of time. However, if you're not a casual fan, you're aware that this Milwaukee team at 100% health is among the best in the league, if not the very best. Once the postseason hits around four months from now, this team's almost definitely going to be knocking on the door of title contention yet again. And if they indeed make it back to back, numerous X-Factors who weren't present during last campaign's title run will be forced to make big contributions. Having said that, let's look at five of them, including three recent signings. The Bucks picked up Boogie on November 30th. DeMarcus Cousins may not be in the same shape physically since his Sacramento or New Orleans days, but from what I've seen from him thus far in Cream City, he still understands how to use angles in the post and utilize his big body down low. Sometimes he's a liability defending screen and rolls, but once Lopez and Portis return, Cousins is going to be used more effectively as strictly a post-up big for around 10-20 to 20 minutes each night. Without P.J. Tucker, the Bucks needed an intimidating enforcer to increase their toughness, despite some faulty rotations defensively. DeMarcus is still a player who opponents can't stand playing against. He's always up in your face and he's complaining to the refs constantly, but at the same time, he's extremely tough to hold down on the glass and he's a decent option to toss it to down low. Boogie has excellent hands with the ability to catch passes in traffic and fight to the rim with force through contact without coming close to losing grip of the rock. It's good to see Boogie in the shape that he's in as his last three outings he's combined to play 83 minutes and in that stretch, the four-time All-Star has put up 17.3 points, 9.3 boards, two steals, and a block per game on 49% shooting from the field. He may only be shooting 23% from three-point range, but Chris Middleton made a great point as to why Cousins attempting that shot alone has its value. Quote, he's a big that can also pop some and knock down some shots, but we all know he's a force in the paint. So for him to keep mixing up his rolls and his pops, it's going to keep the defense off balance and he's a load down there when he gets the ball. Moving on to Jordan Nwora, whose second NBA season has been incredibly up and down so far. The forward started the season playing a meaningful role in the rotation, only to fall out of Coach Bud's favor, mainly due to the constant bodies going in and out of the rotation due to injuries or protocols, Nuora's minutes have started to vary on a nightly basis recently, but with the banged up Bucks needing his services, Jordan's taken advantage of the playing time. Prior to an off night against Dallas, he was posting a double-double by scoring 19 points and hauling in 10 rebounds in 37.2 minutes per game. He also shot 46% from the floor and 42.1% from beyond the arc over that four-game span. Nuora's numbers are up mainly because he's received more touches offensively with Giannis and Middleton, among others, all sidelined. But nonetheless, it's great to see the 45th pick from the 2020 draft developing right in front of our eyes. With all of this crucial experience he's getting, Jordan's slowly molding into a dangerous score, which could be a big factor for the Bucks come the postseason. The Bucks don't require the 23-year-olds from Louisville, Nuora, to average a double-double when everyone's back in the fold, but at times in crucial moments, his flashy shot creating and general scoring instincts could potentially take some pressure off the big three. Milwaukee's bench has struggled to score the basketball this season as they're 28th in points per game, 
Moore is known for his nifty ability at 6 foot 8, 225 to create shots like a smaller guard. But for the most part, when he's come off the bench, the sophomore's struggled with his consistency when he's gotten playing time this year. He could come out and score 15 one game and follow it up with an efficient scoreless outing in the next. Tie that in with his defensive lapses and tendency to turn the basketball over, and it's hard to trust him out there at times. But if Nuora can just get a grip on his inconsistencies with scoring and tighten up the turnovers while staying afloat on the defensive end, then he'll be a key piece for Milwaukee's second unit. He makes highlight plays, but just hasn't managed to put all the pieces together quite yet, but this recent stretch has definitely displayed untapped potential for not only Jordan, but the Milwaukee Bucks as a whole. Moving on to the deep range marksman who the Bucks picked up this summer in Grayson Allen, who's having a breakout year. The guard started the season off red hot by scoring double digits in his first seven consecutive games, showing that he could be a perfect fit in this starting lineup. Grayson's thriving in Milwaukee as the man's averaging career highs in virtually every statistical category, but it hasn't all been a breeze for the former Duke Blue Devil. Before an outing in the Big Easy on December 17th, Allen had only posted double-digit scoring in just two of his previous six games. He's really struggled to regain his early season flow offensively, but Grayson silenced any potential concerns by scoring 25 points while hitting seven three-pointers, which tied a career high. They did end up losing, but the Bucks were severely short-handed in that game, and Grayson stepped up without three starters in Adetokounmpo, Middleton, and Portis. Allen currently ranks 10th in the NBA and made three-pointers with 91, and is making a career-best 40.8% from deep. Additionally, Allen leads the NBA in wide-open three-point attempts with 153 on the season. For reference, the next closest player is Dorian Finney-Smith, with 20 less at 133. Due to the attention that Adetokounmpo draws when he attacks when slashing to the bucket, Allen receives an array of wide-open looks nightly. Giannis and Grayson have formed quite the connection offensively, and if they can keep it up throughout the regular season and into the playoffs, it'll be special. Look at what happened with Bryn Forbes last season. The guard was placed in the exact same role as Grayson, designated to be Adetokounmpo's reliable perimeter shooter, and he pieced together a career year as well. In the postseason, Forbes had an immeasurable impact in the first round against the Miami Heat, as he shot lights out from distance and helped the Bucks convincingly sweep their rival. Allen's a better player than Forbes, and given how well he's played this year, there's no ceiling on the heights he could reach with this team. If he can keep shooting like he has all season, Allen will be a nightmare for opposing defenses in the playoffs. Then there's a player in his second tenure with the organization, Wesley Matthews, who signed a veteran minimum for the rest of the year on December 3rd. You can tell Wesley's in much better physical shape than he was in with the Lakers last season, and that's shown up on the stat sheet. It's a small six-game sample size, but the reputable marksman seems to love it in Milwaukee. Matthews is taking three triples over that stretch and making the highest percentage since his prime days next to Damon Aldridge in Portland, shooting a stellar 38% from three. In 16 minutes, Wesley's also making half of his overall attempts from the field, so this is looking like an outstanding quarter to mid-season signing for Bucks GM John Horst. You can't forget about the upcoming return of their starting shooting guard, Dante DiVincenzo. Dante went down in Game 3 of the first round to Miami with a left ankle injury he'd eventually have successful surgery on, but he'd miss the rest of the playoffs. He was initially cleared to return to the lineup on December 15th against the Pacers, but that hope faded when he entered protocols. The guard is currently still in protocols, and there's been no timetable as of this recording. Still, it's reassuring to know that DiVincenzo's ankles healed. While it'll be great to see him out there on the floor, there's questions about just how good he'll look upon returning after his second season-ending surgery in three years. Dante started in all 66 games he played in last season and played 27 minutes on average in a championship season. So as you can see, while casuals are going to tell you that the Bucks are worse because they lost Tucker and Forbes, there's a lot more to that narrative than there seems to be on the surface. Who's the most important Bucks addition in your opinion? Best answer in the comments gets next video shoutout. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by tomorrow, the 25th of December, are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says Dre has been a vital part of the Warriors' defense, 
but the question says, does his defense have a similar impact to Steph? Boston went on to give a tremendous take. Pause to read the rest of his answer. Thank you for every comment. Only one more day to get your takes in before my announcement on the winners tomorrow. This was Deep Flow. Merry Christmas to all those celebrating, and I'll see you next video.